Hi and welcome to this lesson in renal physiology and glomerular filtration rate. We're going to focus on the paradoxical effect. What is it and how is it caused? So let's get started. Now before we begin this lesson, I think it's important that you have a good understanding of the glomerulus and its structure and how it works, as well as the forces involved in the formation of the ultrafiltrate or glomerular filtration. So if you don't know those or don't feel comfortable with those, I recommend you go to my channel and look at those videos and then revisit this one. Otherwise, let's get started. Here we have our afferent arterial, our capillary, and our efferent arterial. And then again, blood flows in this direction. So we're going to use this representation or illustration to kind of show you what's going on with the paradoxical effect. Likewise, over here, we have the, on the x-axis, glomerular capillary length, uh, what happens to hydrostatic pressure or pressure uh, when we have, when we move fluid from the afferent arterial through the capillary and out the efferent arterial. And our two main forces are the hydrostatic pressures and the oncotic pressure. Now, the thing is with the paradoxical effect, it's focused in on the changes in efferent arterial resistance and how they then affect the hydrostatic pressure inside the glomerular capillary. And so we see here from low to high resistance and that from at low resistance, we have a low hydrostatic pressure, and at high resistance, we have a high hydrostatic pressure. And with the resistance, we're talking about vasoconstriction, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's start off with uh, an efferent arterial that's mildly vasoconstricted or medium or low resistance there, and we can see that we have a hydrostatic pressure of about 40 millimeters of mercury, and that translates over here to this graph where we start off at the afferent arterial side with 40 millimeters of mercury uh, pressure, and it declines as we move through the capillary and out the efferent side because we're filtering fluid. So the decline is the loss of fluid, and the increase in the oncotic pressure that we see starting from the afferent side to the efferent side is because the loss of fluid concentrates the protein or albumin inside the capillary. And the hydrostatic pressure is what pushes fluid out and the oncotic pressure is what pulls it out. So they oppose each other. So it's the difference in those two pressures that lead to the pressure or the formation of the glomerular filtrate. Now, as we increase the efferent arterial resistance, like we see here, we will increase the hydrostatic pressure, as we see here. Now, we haven't adjusted the oncotic pressure just yet. I'll show you that in a second. And likewise, if we maximally constrict the efferent arterial, or we have high resistance, we have this very high hydrostatic pressure, as we see over here. And if nothing happened to the oncotic pressure, then we have this massive increase in net ultrafiltration pressure. And that would then relate to a parallel increase in GFR, as we see here with the green line. But that's not what happens. What happens is we have this paradoxical increase and then decrease, or rather the paradoxical decrease. And that's because the oncotic pressure begins to increase because we lose fluid at this higher concentration of hydrostatic pressure. And so this is what our net oncotic pressure should look like as we lose fluid. So the blue area represents the GFR or the forces involved in the GFR, which is the difference between the hydrostatic pressure and again the oncotic pressure. So this decline in GFR at mid-range of the efferent arterial resistance from low to high is what's referred to as the paradoxical effect. And again, so with the increase in efferent arterial resistance, we have an increase in hydrostatic pressure, which pushes more fluid out of the capillaries, which concentrates the protein inside the capillaries. That then increases the oncotic pressure inside the capillaries. And so that's why we don't have a parallel increase. Rather, we have this paradoxical decrease in GFR. So there you have it. That is the paradoxical effect on glomerular filtration. 
So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comment sections and I'll get back to you guys. Thanks for listening and have a great day.